So if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I really do enjoy creating dynamic websites with WordPress. Today is no exception. We're going to be taking WordPress, Elementor Pro, advanced custom fields and some additional plugins and we're going to combine those together to create a much more feature rich WordPress website. It's going to base itself around creating a recipe based website but don't worry about what the topic is, the skills that we cover, that's the most important thing. So we're going to cover things like filtering with Facet WP, searching our advanced custom fields fields with Search WP. We're also going to take a look at things like nested repeat regions and a ton of really cool, useful things. So join me and I'm going to take you through the entire process of building this website right now. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Test, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to be notified every time we release new content. Okay, so let's just start taking a look at the plugins we're going to use for this particular tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do now is go through a list of the plugins that we're going to use to create this website. Now, as I said at the top of this video, some of these are free, some of them are optional, and some of them are commercial plugins that you need to pay for to get the functionality that we're looking for. Are there free alternatives out there? They may well be, but these are ones that I know work very well together, and they are quick and easy and consistently good quality. So it's up to you if you want to do some research into some other options. These are the ones we're going to use in this particular video. So we jump over now into the plugin section. I can show you everything that's installed. We've got admin columns, advanced custom fields pro. The pro version is being installed because we need to use the repeater regions. However, if the design you want to create doesn't rely upon repeater regions or any of the pro based functions, you can get away with just using the free version. Anywhere Elementor Pro, the reason we're using this one is because this opens up a ton of extra things we can do inside Elementor that currently the Pro version of Elementor itself doesn't allow us to do. And as we go through these different sections, I'll just show you some of the things we can do with that. The classic editor, I just prefer that over Gutenberg, but again, purely optional. Custom Post UI, that is a completely free plugin and allows us to create the custom post types that we're going to work with in this particular video. Ellie Custom Skin, there's a free version and a pro version. For this example, we're going to be using the free version. However, again, if you want to use the pro version, I'll drop a link in the description below so you can check that out. Elemental Pro, because we need to have the theme building options. Facet WP, because this allows us to create really simple, powerful filtering options inside the website. However, there are cheaper alternatives out there, something like the Search and Filter, I think it's called, or Search and Filter Pro. That's another one you can take a look at that does very similar kind of thing. Facet WP Elementor just allows us to link Elementor and Facet WP together to make sure that they work seamlessly. And finally, we've got Search WP. Now, Search WP just means that we can create a search which will go through all the various different parts of our advanced custom fields and our meta fields, our custom post types and so on, which the normal search function inside WordPress doesn't allow us to do. What this also does is it allows us to fine tune and apply weight and various other things to the actual content we want to search against so we can make sure that the search is fully functional. And again, I'll take you through some of the basics of that before we actually complete the site. So that's the plugins we're going to use. And I just want to reiterate one thing at this point in the video. If you're not comfortable working with WordPress, dealing with custom fields and doing things like the theme builder inside Elementor Pro, I'd highly recommend you take a look at some of the other videos on this channel that'll get you up to speed. We're going to go over those and we're not going to cover those in detail. We're going to focus on how we can combine these various different elements together to create a much more feature rich website using things like advanced custom fields. So like I say, tons of videos on the channel that get you up to speed on how to use these tools. This is not one of them. There's a certain level of prior knowledge expected. Okay, so what do we need to do to start off with? Well, the first thing we're going to do is create the custom post type that we're going to work with on this particular website. So what we're going to do, come over to the custom post types UI on the left hand side. First thing we're going to do is create our custom post type. Then we'll take a look at creating some taxonomies we're going to link and allow us to go through and organize and structure the various different recipes in this example that are going to be used on the site. So let's come in, let's take a look at what we have inside the add edit post types. Now, while there are a ton of options inside CPT UI, lots of them we can leave as they are. Some things we do need to put in. First of all, we got the post type slug. This is all about recipes for this example. So that's the slug that's going to be used inside our naming structure. So we're going to put in post type recipes. Then we're going to put the plural. So we're going to call this recipes and the singular underneath that. 
So these are the values that are going to be used inside our dashboard that will show us on the left hand side. You'll see that in a moment. Next, if we take a look, we've got additional labels. Now, if you want to, you can go through this and you can put a post type description to give some information about how this post type is meant to be used. We can put menu names in there and all those kinds of things. However, for most examples, you can leave this as is unless, of course, you're working in a different language and you may want to put in your language specific values. We're going to leave those as they are. We're going to scroll down now to the settings section and inside you, this is where if you're not used to working with CPT UI, you can get overwhelmed by all of the options that you have. However, we don't really need to change much in here. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that a few things are set up. So you can see we've got things like public, publicly queryable, show UI, all quite complex sounding things, but the reality is they're not. Hierarchical, we want to set that up in here. Now, if you're wondering what hierarchical means, it just basically means you've got parent values. For example, you could have dinner and inside there you can have child values. So you could have vegetarian, you could have vegan, you could have low calorie. So there will be a subsection of that particular parent. That's all that means. It just allows you to create a hierarchy inside your custom post types. We're going to set that to be true. So we want to have parent and child relationships inside there. We also need to make sure that we select has archive so we can use it with the archive setting. So underneath has archive, just change that from false to true, and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, so if we scroll down, take a look at some of the other things. You've got menu position, show in menu, menu icon, and so on. This again, like I say, these are optional values. If you want to change things inside here, you can do. It's good to put an icon in there. So it's something that actually has some kind of meaning to the end user when they're looking at all the options that are available. So let's do that now. Now, what you can do with the menu icon is we have a couple of different ways we could work with it. We could upload one to our media library and use that. We just drop in the link inside there, or you could use the dash icons. What we're going to do is we're going to use dash icons because it's a nice, easy and free way of being able to add icons in that'll look consistent with our layout. Just head over to dash icons, just to search for dash icons. And you'll see what we have then is three values, copy CSS, HTML, and glyph. And above that, we have the actual CSS class that's associated with this particular icon. And if you scroll down, you can see you have a range of different free icons you can start to reference. I've already gone ahead and copied this. So what I'm gonna do is just jump back over into my dashboard underneath the menu icon section. We're gonna drop that in there and that will now allow us to use that icon when we save this out. Okay, so if we take a look now at the bottom, you can see it says supports. These are the normal features you have inside your actual post type. So things like the title, the editor, the featured image, your excerpts and so on. Enable whatever you think is relevant to you. For this example, we just want the title, the editor and the featured image. We're going to leave that as is and then we can scroll down, take a look at some of the other things. So we don't want any custom supports. We don't want to worry about built in taxonomies just yet. So we're going to leave those as they are. So that's the basics done. And now all we need to do is scroll back up to the top and we're just going to say add post type. Once that's done, we should see now on the left hand side, we've got our new recipe section. We've got all recipes and add new. So we've created our custom post type. Now, if you ever create a custom post type or taxonomy and you make a mistake or you just basically want to change something, it's very easy to get back to. You just choose the CPT UI options on the left hand side. If we're working with a post type or your taxonomy, just choose the relevant one from there. Once you've done that, you've got a tab that says edit post types. You can click, then you get a little drop down that allows you to edit any of the post types and you can simply open up the post type that you want, scroll to the relevant section, make your changes and then just resave that and you are done. The same goes for your taxonomies. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create our taxonomies. So we're going to click to open up taxonomies. Now, if you're not sure what a taxonomy is or you've never heard the term before, it's synonymous with WordPress. And what it realistically means is ways of allowing you to group content together. So we're working with recipes. So we're going to have a taxonomy called recipe type. We're also going to have another taxonomy that's going to be featured, which allows us to do various different things and associate or group posts together under any of those custom taxonomies. Hope that makes sense. You'll see what I mean as we go through and start creating some content and then linking everything together. So let's just create our first taxonomy and this is going to be our recipe types. So we're just going to drop in recipe types and you'll see as I put a space in, it'll automatically put an underscore in there for the taxonomy slug. 
Next up, we're going to put in the plural label. So we're going to drop recipe types in there and then the singular, which we'll just put recipe type. Then we can attach it to a post type. Now, the nice thing with this is taxonomies are not limited to custom post types that we create. We can associate them with anything else inside the core of WordPress. So we could, if we wanted to create additional taxonomies and then associate them with posts, pages, media, and anything else that's associated as part of WordPress itself. And you can see it says, posts, WP core, pages, WP core, and so on. These are core functions inside WordPress itself. What we're interested in though is recipes, which is our new custom post type. Click on recipes and we can scroll down and you can see we can add the taxonomy if we want to make no more changes to anything else that's on the site itself. However, we can come in and change some of the settings or any of the labels in much the same way as we could do with the post types. So let's just scroll through. I'm not going to change any of the labels or values in there. We're going to come to the settings and take a look inside there at what we have. Now, again, this can look incredibly daunting upon first look, but most of the values are either self-explanatory or you don't need to change them. You can leave them at their default values. So again, let's take a little look through. We want it to be public because we want people to be able to see these and the same goes with a queryable. So we leave those as they are. However, hierarchical, again, like I say, we want to have the ability to group these and have subsections, so parent and child values. So we're going to change that to be true. We can scroll down and take a look at some of the options we have then. So you can see we have things rewrite hierarchical and show in admin columns and so on. So some of these are useful. Some of them can just be left as they are. Now we're going to leave these values as they are for now. But like I say, if we wanted to, we could easily come back in at a later date and make changes to anything on here that we wanted. The only thing we do want to change, though, is change this rewrite hierarchical, and we're going to set that to true. Okay, so we've done everything we need in this. So we're going to scroll back up to the top, hit Add Taxonomy. Once we've done that, now if we come over to our recipe section, you can see now we have a third option, which is recipe types. So that's our new custom taxonomy. So we're going to do this one more time. We're going to come back to Add Edit Taxonomy. And from there, we're going to create a second taxonomy. And this is where we're going to group things based upon what I just termed featured. However, you could call it whatever you want. All it really means is that I can do things like they're going to be a featured recipe or they're going to be a seasonal special. It allows me a way of tagging those without using WordPress tags. So let's just set this to be featured. So we're going to type in a featured. We'll do the same underneath for the singular and we'll just copy that for sorry for the plural and the singular so that's fine and again we're going to associate this with recipes scroll down leave all the values inside there we are going to say change this to hierarchical so true on there and rewrite hierarchical and set that to be true as well so there we go we've now created our second taxonomy we'll just click on add and now if we come over to recipes you can see there's our second taxonomy our fourth entry underneath the recipe section so we've now created the basic custom post type and the taxonomies that we want to associate with that custom post type. We're now ready to put in the meta fields, which are basically the information that we want to insert into our custom recipe. Now, before we wrap this section up on the custom post type UI, there's one other thing I want to show you that could be very useful when you're working with taxonomies. This is a totally optional thing. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. But if you ever use the post section inside WordPress, you know that you can quick edit various different things. One of the things we want to do with this is allow us to quick edit the taxonomy information. It saves us having to go into the actual edit post page if we only want to add in a custom taxonomy reference. So how do we do that? Well, I'm a featured at the moment, so we're going to scroll right the way down to the bottom under the settings section. Keep on going down and you can see it says show in quick bulk edit panel currently and by default is set to false. What we're going to do is we're going to set that to true and save our taxonomy. I'm going to come back out of the feature and change that this time to recipe types, which is our other custom taxonomy. Scroll right the way down and do exactly the same thing again. So we're going to say true to both of these. Now, at the moment, we don't have any content in here, but what this is going to do when you go into list all of the recipes, this just means you can quick edit and just adjust the taxonomies that are associated with any of the custom posts you create optional but can make a massive difference when you're working with your custom post types anyway that's just an optional thing i wanted to show you now we're going to move on to creating the custom field sections to access our custom fields all we need to do is come to the left hand side of the dashboard and come out to custom fields and from there we can go to the field groups which we can view any of the field groups we've previously created or we can go in and click on add new so let's just add a new field group in 
And from here, we can now go through and specify how we want this field group to actually work. First thing we're going to do is give this a name. So we're going to call this recipe. And from there, we're going to come down and choose exactly where these custom fields are going to be used. By default, you can see under location, it says post type is equal to post. So that will add anything we add inside this custom fields field group into our normal posts as part of WordPress, which obviously in this example is not what we want to do. We want to associate these with the recipes. So what we're going to do is post type is equal to, we're going to click, and we're going to come down, you can see we have recipe now, our custom post types. We can click inside there, and that will now associate that with our custom post type of recipe. So now we've done that, we can go ahead and start creating the custom meta fields we want to use and associate with our recipe post type. So we've got this main area, which is where we can go to control all these things. So we're going to start adding in the fields that we want. So the first field we're going to come in, we're going to choose preparation time. So we're going to type in the name we want to use. Once we've done that, when we've got the next field, you can see it automatically pre-fills out the field name and puts an underscore anywhere there's a space. We can now choose the field type. Now, depending upon whether you're using the pro version of ACF or the free version, you'll see a different amount of results inside here. I'm using the pro version so I can click and expand and I currently have all of the options that are available as part of the pro package and the free package. So what we're going to do is we're going to just choose text for this. We can choose instructions if we want to. So if you want to make a more intuitive interface that's part of your custom post type, so people may not know exactly what to do with some of the different things you want to insert into these custom post page uh, meta fields, you can put some instructions in there. You can also specify whether they're required, default values, placeholder text, and all those kinds of things. So you've got a lot of options inside here. We're going to keep this pretty simple because I'm assuming that anybody's going to use the site is going to know exactly what's going on when it comes to the recipes. So we can scroll through, make sure everything is as we want it to be, and we'll just close this down by clicking on the name, add another field in. This time we're going to call this one cooking time. Come to the next field, you see it automatically pre-fills that out. The field type, we're going to leave as text. And you may be thinking, well, why are we leaving it a text if we're dealing with a numeric value for cooking time? Realistically, all I want to do is be able to put the cooking time and then I want to specify whether it's minutes, hours, or a combination of anything there. So text just makes it a lot easier. But obviously, if you want to filter based upon different values, you can use different field types. Like I say, we're keeping this fairly straightforward, but we will take a look at various different ways of filtering information later on in this video. Okay, so we're going to come down and we're going to say placeholder text, and in there we're going to put e.g. So anybody that's looking at this will know how they have to put the information into this particular field. I'm going to copy that because we're going to use that in the next one as well. So we're going to come in, we're going to just scroll back up to the top, come back out of cooking time, add a new field in. This time we're going to put in yield, click underneath, text for this one, and we're going to leave that as is. And I'm going to keep on doing this now until I've covered most of these different bases off. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back when most of these are input into our layer. So I've gone ahead and put most of the fields that we need into our custom field group. You can see we've got various different options, things like text area, WYSIWYG editor. Now WYSIWYG editor just basically means that if we want to put more rich text in there, so things like bold, italic, underline, maybe even insert images, we have that functionality built into our custom post type. Now the final one we're going to do, which like I say, this is purely optional depending upon the kind of site that you're dealing with. We're going to create a repeater field. And a repeater field just basically means that we can have an unknown quantity of information. So in this example, we're going to deal with nutritional information. So we could have fat content, we could have sugar content, salt content. So we don't know what's going to go in there and different values and different entries for different recipes is something that's a very distinct possibility. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on add a field. With this one, we're going to call this nutritional information. Come to the next one, that'll pre-fill that out. Field type, we're going to come down and we're going to choose the option for repeater. And you can see that now opens up some additional subfields. Now subfields are basically the same as fields, but they sit inside your repeater. So what we're going to do is we're going to add three fields into this. The first one is going to be nutrition type. So you can see we create these in exactly the same way that we would any other kind of meta field. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to just close this up. We're going to add another field in, and this one's going to be nutritional value. Again, we'll come to the field name. Tech, field type is going to be text. And the final one is going to be the percentage of your daily allowance. So we're going to put percentage. 
daily value. And this is going to be the sort of percentage of any other nutrition. So the fat content, the sugar content and those kinds of things. So we've now created a repeater field inside our actual setup. So we can come through and choose some other options. So you can see we've got collapsed. We're going to just choose nutrition type. So we can see the nutrition type when this is collapsed out. You can then go through and you can choose layout and you've got tables, blocks and rows. We're going to, this will just kind of dictate the layout in the dashboard. Nothing to do with the front end of the website. So we're going to leave that to be table. You could then change this from add row and you could just say add new additional nutritional information, whatever you kind of want. That's just the label for the button. Okay, so that's our repeater field all created and everything is, is set up. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see we can go through and we can do some other things about the way this is going to be displayed and some of the features that we have. So if we wanted to, we could hide various different elements as part of our actual meta fields. However, we've kind of controlled that inside the custom post type saying what we want to include in there. So you can leave those completely as they are. That's perfectly fine. Now we're going to come up and hit publish. And that's now going to create our new custom meta fields as part of our recipe section. So if we come over now to all recipes. We now come in and say add new. You can see we now have all our custom field information. And if you scroll down, you can see there's our nutritional information, which is our repeater field. And we can click on add row, add row, add row, and keep on adding additional information inside there. So it's a nice, simple, clean interface, all set out, ready for us to start creating content. Now that we've gone ahead, created our custom fields, our custom post types and taxonomies, I've now gone ahead and just added in some recipes and some different taxonomy information. But we have one little problem, which is more of a usability issue than anything else. And that is if we come over to our recipe section and view our list of recipes, you can see we don't really have a very nice interface. We have a list named title of all the different recipes and the date they were published. That's okay if you only have a small amount, but when you start to grow and have maybe hundreds of different recipes, this isn't necessarily going to be the nicest or easiest way of working. Now, there are a couple of ways of getting around this. First of all, you could, if you wanted to, come into the custom post type UI, come into our taxonomies, and once we're inside there, let's edit a taxonomy and choose our recipe type and scroll right the way down. And you'll see one of the options we have inside there is to actually allow us to see this inside the actual listing. As you can see, we've got show admin column. Click on there and set that to true. Come down and say save taxonomy. Now come back into our recipes and say all recipes. We now have our recipe type in there. So it's already a little bit better and we could utilize that method if we wanted to. However, we can use one free plugin that just makes it even more useful. So let's take a look at that. If we come over into our plugin section and go to install plugins, we have the option for admin columns. Like I say, this is optional and this is the free version. And while it doesn't work fully with advanced custom fields with the free version, you have to have the pro version for that and one of the plugins. This does give us enough information to be able to much, make a much more usable listing for our recipes. So let's come into our settings section. And under there, you can see we're currently looking at the AE global templates, which is not what we want to make changes to. So I'm gonna click on there and we're gonna find recipes. Once we've done that, that'll show us the different columns we currently have inside our recipes listing. As you can see, title, recipe type, which we just added in through custom post UI. And finally, the date at the bottom. Now, let's just take a look what we can do. Let's expand out the title. Now, title doesn't really mean anything. That's perfectly fine if you're writing blog posts, but we're dealing with recipes. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that to recipe name. So that already makes more sense. Once we've done that, we're going to close that. We're going to leave the date. That's perfectly fine. We'll leave that at the end. We can come into recipe types and we can edit that if we want to, but that's that's all good. We can leave that as it is. We can, we can come into add column. And from here, we can do a ton of really useful things. First of all, let's say we want to put in the thumbnail for the featured image, just so we get a visual representation of the recipe that we're currently taking a look at inside of our listings. All we need to do is come down to where it says custom. I'm going to scroll down, find featured image and select that. We're not going to worry about changing any of the values. We're going to leave those as they are. We're going to close this up and we're going to reorder that so it puts it in after recipe name. So we now have the name of the recipe, the featured image, the recipe type, and the date. We also want to put in another column. So let's say add another column. This time we're going to change that out. We're going to come down and we're going to say a taxonomy. Now, because we've created custom taxonomies as part of ACF, we can reference those inside here just by using the taxonomy option. So 
You can see at the moment it says taxonomy featured, which in this example is exactly what we want. So what we can do is we can say featured to give it a name and we can leave that as is and we can then move that up so it sits after the featured image before recipe types. So now if we save this and update, we can now jump over and take a look at our new layout for our recipes listings. There we go. We now have a much more informative layout, which is pretty cool. What we can also do is we've got these edit and quick edit and so on, the kinds of things that we're used to. We could make this even more intuitive if you wanted to. Now, again, this is totally optional, but let's come back into our admin column settings. Let's say we want to add a new column inside there. We're going to set it to actions and we leave action set on there. And that's perfectly fine. We'll say use icons and we're going to click on update. Now what we're going to do is going to come back over and refresh this page. And now instead of having that little hover over where we've got those little sort of floating options to quick edit and so on, we now have icons on the right hand side that allow us to do exactly the same thing. So view, trash or bin, whatever you want to call it, quick edit and edit. So if we click on quick edit, you can see where we put the recipe types in and the feature and we set those to be part of this quick edit section as part of custom post type UI. We now have a much more user friendly dashboard for anyone that's working with the recipes that we're creating as part of the website. Now, obviously, you can use the admin columns and set this up throughout your entire site. So if you want to do the same thing for the posts, if you were having posts as well as the recipes, you could do exactly the same thing and lay things out however you wanted to. But I think you'll agree this already looks a much more user friendly layout for actually working with dealing with your recipes. So that's how we're going to use admin columns. Like I say, this is the free version and purely optional, but I think it's worth investing the time and effort to install this and set it up like I've done here. It's just a lot more user friendly. Now, because we're using the hello theme alongside Elementor, the hello theme is basically pretty much a blank theme, which gives us a nice clean canvas to work from when we're building out our website. But one of the problems is we don't really have any way of styling fonts and so on. So we need to set up some basics inside Elementor itself, and then we can worry about dealing with the specifics on any of the different sections through the actual theme builder itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to start working with setting those things up. So we're going to come over, we're going to create our home page to start off with. Now, it doesn't matter what page you're going to create or anything else, just as long as we get access to Elementor, that's all that matters. So you say add new, and from there, we're going to come in and we're going to call this home page. We'll save that or we'll publish that, and then we'll click edit with Elementor to open up the Elementor editor, and then we can access the settings. So once we've done that, we're going to come over to this top little left-hand hamburger menu, and from there, we have the option to choose default colors, fonts, and the color picker. So let's start off with our fonts. At this point in time, like I say, Elementor doesn't really have a huge amount of control. Hopefully this is something they're going to be working on with global styling in the next version of Elementor. But for now, this is what we've got to work with. So the primary headline, we're going to set these up. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to change this from Roboto. And the font that we're going to use is a font called Dosis. I'm going to choose that. Weight 600 is fine. We're going to do the same thing then for the secondary. So again, dosis, choose that. We'll set the secondary headline to 600 as well. On the body text, we're going to change this over and we're going to use bitter. There we go. 400 is fine. Accent text, we're going to come back into there. And again, we're going to just use dosis in there. Just so we've got some consistency. Click apply. Then we're going to come back out of this. Come back up. We're going to choose our default colors. So inside there, you can see we've got a range of default colors. We're going to drop in the value that we want to work with. Now, I'm going to work with this sort of deep purple kind of color. So our primary color is going to be that. So we're just going to drop that value inside there. You can see that picks up our color. Accent, we could change that to whatever we wanted to. For now, I'm not going to worry too much about it. I come back, click on Apply, come back out of this, and the color picker. We're going to do the same thing inside here. The color picker is basically the eight standard colors you can choose from whenever you sort of choose anything that's got a color option, so headings and things along those lines. So you can set these up to be site wide. So you can change this from this blue color and we'll change that to put the purple inside there. And obviously you can create a full color palette that works with whatever design you're working with. And you can come in and change this at any point and any changes you make to this will update and reflect through your site. So it's good to know that these are there at the moment. Like I say, they're very, very basic. So once we've done that, I'm going to come out and go down to settings. And from there, we're just going to say hide the title. I'm going to click on update. So we've done some basics. We've set the basic things up. 
Next thing we're going to do is go through and start building out some of the key templates, the header and the footer and so on. Then we can move on and start building some more of the templates. Now that's some of the basics. Let's get on some of the more fun stuff. Let's start building out our templates. What we're going to do, come into the template section and come into theme builder. Now from the theme builder, this is we're going to start building out the actual template layout for our header and our footer. So what we're going to do, we're going to come in and we're going to say we want a header and we say add new header. I'm going to call this default header. So we know this is the default header that's going to be used throughout the site unless we use something different. Create our template and from there, we're just going to pull in a predefined template. We're going to use that as the basis. So this one we're going to use, click on insert. Once we've done that, we can now fine tune and tweak this to get exactly what we want. So let's just come and choose that. Okay, click on there. What we can do now is we can come into style, for example, we can change this to a solid color, click on there. And now you can see there's our color chips and there's the purple color we wanted. So we don't have to go through the process of doing that every single time. So once we've done that, we've now set the color up on there. We can come in and change this logo over. So we can come in, we can just click on there and I've got my logo that I'm going to use. We'll insert that media. There's our logo set up in there. Custom URL is perfectly fine. It's going to go with the site URL. So you can see because we've used a template, all these things have been set up for us. Now, currently this is set to use a menu and we don't have any menus created, but we will do that a little later on when we start to create some content. So for now, don't worry about that. Once we've done that, we're going to click on publish, come into add condition and you can see it says include entire site and that's perfectly fine. So we say save and close. There's our header section set up. We're going to come back out of this now and we're going to do the same thing for our footer. So theme builder again into the footer section, add new, call this default footer, create our template. Once we've done that, we can now go and choose a predefined or we can build our own from scratch if you want to. It's entirely up to you. Like I say for me, it's just for the speed of creating these particular template files. So there's our footer section. Again, it's waiting for our menu structure inside there. We can change anything we want. So we can say we want to change that from 2018 to 2019. And we'll get rid of the design by Elementor. Get rid of that. Hit publish, add a condition, and you can see includes entire site. So save and close. We've now created the header and footer for our site. We're now able to go in and start building some of the more fun things inside this layout. Now, the next thing we're going to create is the actual layout for each one of our loop items. So taking a look at the example of our homepage, you can see we have the designs that have this nice layout. We've got the nice large image at the top, the name of the actual recipe itself, a brief description and the view recipe button. If we take a look further down, the latest and greatest recipes uses a similar layout. It's just a slightly smaller version. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the template for this example item. Now, this is part of the loop and all the loop basically means is it will repeat individual recipes in this example and each one will use the same template, the same loop template, and they will have their own custom data inside. So a different image, a different title, a different sort of section of text, different link in the button and those kinds of things. To do that, we're going to use Elementor Custom Skin. Now, this is the free version. And again, this is very, very useful and very powerful plugin that opens up a ton of really great possibilities. So let's head back over to the dashboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to come into the template section and down into our theme builder. Once we're inside there, we're going to come and click on loop, which is a new entry that you'll see once you install Elementor Custom Skin. Now we're going to go in and we're going to add a new loop item in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this default loop. So we'll know what this is actually going to sort of pertain to. Click on that, create our template, and we'll go into the Elementor editor as you'd normally expect to see. So we now have the ability to get rid of this predefined layout thing, and we're going to come in and start building out the actual layout. Now, for simplicity, we're going to come down to the settings section. I'm going to come in and we're going to say we want this page layout to be the Elementor canvas, so we get rid of any, any headers and footers. And the preview section, we're going to come into here and we're going to choose recipe. And we can choose anyone we want. So let's just start typing something in. So we'll start typing in Cran and that'll find the Cranberry one. So we'll click on that, apply and preview. Now, obviously nothing is going to show up at the moment, but what this means is we're going to be using the right data, in example, the recipes to build out this template. So we know we're working with the right information. Now, don't worry about the size of this. We're just creating the layout and we know that when we put this on the page, it's going to be smaller. So don't worry too much about the fact that it's going to look a little bit weird, a little bit misshapen. So the first thing we're going to do is pull in the actual content. So let's click on this and we're going to create a single row column. 
And from there, we're just going to click on that and we're going to just make sure that everything is set up the way we want it to be. So if we come over onto the layout section, we're going to make sure that the box is fine. The column gaps we're going to set to no gap. We don't want any borders around this. We want to control those ourselves. Now we've got the placeholder, we can start dropping in the content. So we come back over and click on our widgets. First thing we're going to do is we're going to pull in the featured image. So we're going to drag and drop that into our single row column. And you can see that now immediately pulls in the image that we've got from the product we're using as our sample. That's great. We're going to set this to be whatever size you kind of want. So you can see we've got all the normal options inside there, your thumbnail, your medium and so on. So choose a value that's going to work well on the size that you're going to actually display this. I'll leave that to large. That looks perfectly fine. And we can set the link on this if you want. We're going to click on that and we're going to say we want this to go to custom URL. And from there, we're just going to change this over and click on dynamic and we're going to say post URL. So that just means that this image will be clickable and allow us to click through to the recipe that we want. It's a nice user friendly way of doing these kinds of things. Next step, we're going to come back over and we're going to go in and choose the next section, which is going to be the title that we want. So we're going to drop in a heading and drag and drop that inside there. You can see it picks up the formatting that we set up on your, your own. So we're going to change the dynamic for the title. Click on there and we're going to come down and we're going to say post title. You can see that will then pull in the actual name. Now we can fine tune and configure any of this text. So at the moment it's looking a little bit thick. And like I say, Elementor doesn't have great controls over this. It has very basic controls when you set them globally. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up the style section, we're going to come up the typography, and we're going to adjust that inside there as well. So we're going to set the weight to be something like, let's try 400. That looks pretty good. I like that. Okay. So we're going to use that. I'm going to come back over. I'm going to come back out of this. I'm going to set this to be H3. So it's slightly less important because there's going to be a lot of these on the page. Okay. So that's the basics for the title itself. However, what I'm going to do one more thing, come back into the style, into the typography, and I'm going to come into the style section, into the, sorry, into the transform section. And we're going to say we want to capitalize this. So it doesn't matter how we type it in, it'll capitalize the first letter of each of the words. Just a style thing that I quite like. Now, next up, we've got a new option. So we're going to come in, we're going to say text editor. And when we install Elemental Custom Skin, one of the things that gives us is a new dynamic option. So if we click on, on there, we have a new additional option called Post Summary. So this is great. We can click on that. And now what we can do is we can configure this. So Post Summary, click on the little cog icon or the little wrench icon, and we can change that to whatever value we want. And that will then give us the ability to control exactly how much text pulled from the main body content that we've got inside our custom post type. So we'll leave that at 25. What we're going to do is at the end of it, say afterwards, we're going to put in a couple of full stops or periods as the Americans will call it. And that way it just kind of, it's that universal symbol for saying there's more content available. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is come in, choose a button. And we're simply going to drag that button and put it underneath there. And from there, we're going to say, change this to view recipe. There we go. Now we can style this. So again, we can do what we've done before. Come with the style option. Typography, we'll leave as is, but we'll set that to be a weight of, say, 600. And we're going to set this transform to be uppercase, so it's a little bit more punchy. And uh, that's fine for that. Text color, we're going to set to be white. And the background color, we're going to set to be our global sort of burgundy color. And we're going to come back into our content. And we'll just make this medium so the button's just a little larger. Okay, so now we need to link that through. So at the moment, it's using a null link. So what we're going to do is going to click on dynamic, and that'll give us a ton of different options. What we want is the post URL. That will then link this through to the individual post. So when someone clicks on the image or they click on the view recipe, that'll take us through and show us that actual recipe. And it's just part of the loop. So it just works all nice and neat and tidy. Now I'm quickly just going to apply a little bit more styling to this to make it look nice and neat and tidy. Like I say, this is something that is purely optional and it's not really part of how we create this. I just want to make sure it all looks good. So I'm going to do that. Then we're going to move on. Okay, so there's my styling done. All I'm going to do now is click on publish. Now, we're using this as part of the loop, so we don't want to set any conditions to it. So what you can do is when it comes to this publish settings, just leave the add conditions empty and just click on save and close. That's now created our loop item. So we can now start to use that in our designs. Now that we've created the loop design, the next thing we need to do is create our archive. And this is going to be where we're going to list all the different recipes. So we're going to use this in various different places. So let's just build that out. Come over to templates again inside your dashboard and back down to theme builder. 
Well, once we're in the theme builder, we're going to come over to archive. Click on add new archive. And then we're just going to give this a name. So we're going to call this default recipe archive. Create our template. And once we've done that, we're now going to create a two column setup. We're going to have the left hand section, which is going to take up around 70%. That's where we're going to be listing the recipes. And then the right hand section, we're going to put our filters in a little later in the video. However, we're not going to use any of these templates. We're going to build this ourselves. Let's close this down. Let's come in and add in a new section. We're going to set this to be a two column. Going to come into here and we're just simply going to come in and we're going to add a little bit of extra space at the top and bottom. So we're going to add 50 pixels top, 50 pixels bottom. There we go. That gives us a nice little bit of a layout there. So the next thing we can do now is we can drop in the loop. So to do that, we're going to come back over to the left hand side and we're going to pull in the archive posts. So we're going to drag and drop that into there. Now at the moment, this is just going to try to pull in what it thinks is the right information and use it in the right design. However, we don't want to use the classic or the cards or the new full content in Elementor 2.7. We want to choose custom. Clicking on custom opens up the Ellie custom skin options and that allows us now to choose the custom skin that we want to use, the custom loop that we just created. Now, don't worry about these extra options down here. There, if you're using the pro version and to get access to those, you need to purchase the pro version, which I'll put a link in the description below. So if you're interested in grabbing that, you can do that. However, for this, we don't need it unless, like I say, you want to take advantage of some of these extra new options. What we're going to do is select the default templates. We're going to click and you can see there's our default loop. So if we created more of those loop items, we see different entries inside here. However, we've only created the ones. We're going to click on that. And that now pulls in our basic loop. Now you may be thinking, well, why isn't that showing the information that I'm expecting it, which would be the recipes? Well, we just need to go in and tell it to actually start using those. So to do that, it's pretty easy. All we need to do is come down to the cog icon in the bottom left hand corner and we can change the preview that we're going to use. So come into preview settings and from there, we're going to change that from recent posts. We're going to come down, we want to choose recipes archives. We're going to click on there click apply and preview and then we should find that we start to see the images and the information we've just pulled in now directly from the new custom post type using the loop template that we've just created. So there we go. There is our basic archive page all set up. So what we can do now is just add a couple of extra features in there just to make sure everything is looking the way we want it to. We simply come back over to the settings on the left hand side. We're going to scroll down, come into pagination and we're going to set that in there to be previous Actually, we go for numbers, previous and next. We can configure that if we want to, and we can set everything up in there. We're also going to come into the facet WP and enable that. Now, this is just something to do with the filtering, which we'll take a look at later on, but we just need to make sure that's enabled on any page that we want to use the facet WP filtering functions on. And because this is one of those pages, we need to make sure that's enabled. So what we do now is just click on publish. And once we've done that, we can now set the parameters or the conditions for where this is going to be used. Say add condition. We don't want to use this for all archives. We're going to just change that and we're going to say this, we want this for recipe archives. So we're going to come down, recipe archive, save and close, and we're now done. We've created the archive for our recipe section. Now then, the next thing we're going to do is create the single post template that's going to contain the actual recipe itself. Now, normally I would just go in and use the Elementor templates. However, if you want to use the repeater region, you can't do that. This is where anywhere Elementor's templates come into play. So that's what we're going to use for this. However, like I say, if you are not using a repeater region, you could do the same kind of things we're going to do now, but just utilizing the normal templates and the normal single post template inside Elementor Pro. So what we're going to do, come over to AE templates and we're going to come in and we're going to say add new. From there, we're going to give this a title. I'm going to call this default recipe single, and I'm going to put AE anywhere that I'm using anywhere Elementor, so I know exactly what I'm using. Now, you're going to see that we have some additional options that are available to us when we're using anywhere Elementor Pro's template in structure. We're going to need to set some of these parameters up to make sure that everything is configured the way we need it to. So the render mode, we're going to click and expand that, and you can see we have some, well, quite a few options inside there. We're going to choose post template, once we do that, you can see that opens up a range of different options. We're going to just choose the post type applicable to the single post layout. So we're going to click on there, and this is going to be for the recipes. Preview post, we can leave that to whatever, and you'll see it'll just basically, we can just choose any of the posts that we've created already. We're going to say auto apply, and we're going to leave the theme default for the template. So once we've done that, we can save that or set as a draft, whichever one you want to do. And now we can go into Elementor and start building out the actual design itself. 
So this is going to open up Elementor in the way you'd expect to see it, and we can start making changes to that in the way we normally do. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another two-column layout. I'm just going to click, set that to be a two-column layout like so. We're going to have the main recipe in this main area. On the right-hand side, we're going to have some related information. So it could be sign up to your mailing list. It could be things like you know your favorite articles. Whatever you want to put in there, it's good to have some additional information on the page to help drive traffic to other parts of your website. So that's what we're going to use this for. We're also going to come down. We're going to say we want to get rid of this default recipe rubbish at the top. So we're going to come in there and say hide the page title to get rid of that. I'm going to click on this section. We're going to come into advanced. And we're just literally going to put in 50 pixels padding top and bottom again, just to give us some breathing space on what we want to do. Now we start pulling in the relevant information for our individual recipe. Now we can't be using the normal default layout options, the normal widgets we have inside Elementor. We need to start using the Anywhere Elementor option. So I'm going to close these down so we can just see the widgets that we want. So we're going to put in the AE title to start off with and drag and drop that in there. And you see that now pulls in the relevant title for this article. We're just going to quickly tweak that. It's so going to commit the style into the typography. And we're going to make this just a little bit thinner. So then like that. that's pretty good. Next up, we're going to drop in the post metadata. So again, we're going to use the anywhere element or options. So we're going to scroll through until we find that AE post meta, drag and drop that underneath there. So you can see that pulls that data in. So all I need to do now is just basically set the styling up on there. So we can come in and we can just set our style into whatever we want. We would also get rid of anything we don't want on there. So we may want to just have the date that it was posted and the actual person that posted it. That's perfectly fine. And you can see when we click on any of these little tabs, we can choose whether we show something and what icon we want to use with it and also any labels and things we may want to use. So we can fine tune and configure that to get what we want. So we're just going to quickly jump into the style, set the text color to be our purple color. And we're just going to make the typography and we're going to adjust the size of that to make it somewhere around 12 pixels. Like I say, these are all just styling options. and You can basically style this any way you want to. Okay. Come back out of that. We're going to come in this time and we want to make sure that we put the image that we want at the top. So we're going to say AE post image, drag and drop that into our section, change that from thumbnail to something like large to make sure it fits and looks good on the actual section itself. Do we want to link it to anything? Nope, we don't want to link that to anything because obviously we're already in the post, so we don't need that. We can apply an overlay to this if you want. Any kind of styling you want to do, it's entirely up to you how you want to lay things out. Come back out and again, we're just going to come in and say AE post content, drop that in there and that now puts in the actual content itself. Now, I'm going to leave it at this point because we're going to come back a little later and take a look at how we can add all the extra things in. We're just going to go through now and make sure that everything is working and I can show you where we are so far. So the first we need to do is click on update. Once we've done that, we can now come back out of this. So we can come back out to the top left, exit to our dashboard. We're going to come back into the appearance section and we're going to come down to menus this time. Once we're in menus, we're going to add in our main menu. So we're going to just change the name of this, call this main menu. And we're going to get rid of this sample page. We don't want that and we don't want this section by here, this home page. We're going to get rid of that. So we can now create a recipe section so we can drop that in there. So because we're dealing with an archive, all we need to do now is quickly just add in a custom link. So we're going to click on custom links. We're going to just change this and we're going to drop in that link there, and we're going to put in recipes for the actual link itself and say add to menu. There we go. So now we're going to say create our menu. Once we've done that, we've now set most of the things up. We just set that to be primary and save that again. And we now have our menu set up. Now let's quickly hop over to the site itself and let's take a look at where we are right now. So jump over and you can see there's our homepage, which looks absolutely terrible because we've done nothing with it. What we're interested in though is the new recipe section. So if we click on there, You'll see that now takes us in and shows us that custom loop layout that we've set up. We've got the archive page set up, which is what we're currently using now. And if we scroll down, you'll see everything is laid up nice and neat and tidy. And then if we take a look at any of these by clicking on view recipe, we can go in and there is our single post template being used. So we've got the basics put together. The next thing we need to do is start fleshing that out with some of the advanced custom fields data, styling that and making sure this page is now looking as good as possible with all the data that we need. And finally, we'll take a look at adding in the repeater region and how we can drop that into the design and how we create the custom template to actually output all that data. 
So one of the key parts of this entire website is the home page. The reason for it is because it uses quite a few different techniques and some of the things that we put into play with the taxonomies and so on to make sure that we can have a nice versatile layout. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this down into various different components. We're going to start off first of all by setting up the featured recipes section. So what we created the home page as you saw earlier on the video, but we've got nothing on it. So let's come in and start working on building the, the home page out. Let's start to flesh that out. Okay, so there's our blank page. First thing we're going to do is we're just simply going to drop in a section at the top that's just primarily there just to put in a header section where the search is going to be. And we're not going to worry too much about the search and functions like that at the moment. We'll work on those a little bit later on. But let's start by just putting the placeholder ready for where the search is going to go in. Okay, so we've got the section at the top. We're going to come into the height. We're going to set a minimum height in here. And we're going to set this to be somewhere in the region of 300 pixels high. That should be nice and tidy. We're going to set a background image. So we're going to come into style. And we're going to come into choose an image for the background. And I've already uploaded that, so we're going to use the image, which is this one, I believe. There we go. Insert that media in there, and we'll just set the parameters up for this. So we're going to set this to be center, center. Fix this perfectly or fine. I'll just leave it a default. No repeat, and we'll have that to cover it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over into the background overlay, and we're just going to drop in an overlay so we can separate the background. Uh, we we'll just choose black on there. That looks fine. And uh, we're finally going to just drop in a search form and a title. So we come in, we're going to drop in a normal WordPress search form because search WP, the nice thing with that is it integrates directly into the actual normal search form inside WordPress itself, it just expands the functionality we have available to us in there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set up a few things inside here. So we're going to change this search message and put something a little bit more interesting in there. And we're just going to set the style on this text color is perfectly fine although we'll go a little darker on there i think actually a little darker again would be good there we go and we'll set the background color to be white and we'll drop the opacity down so it's a little less in your face and finally we're going to come into the button section and in there we'll set the text color to be white even though we're just using the icon and we're going to set the background to this purple so again we keep that consistency of image throughout everything we're doing Finally, we're just going to come in and put a title above that. So we'll drop a heading in above there. We'll set that to be something that's quite nice and catchy because obviously we want people to enjoy searching for the things that they want on our website. We'll H2 is perfectly fine on there. We'll just come into our style and we'll set that text color to be white so it stands off. And finally, we'll just adjust our typography so it isn't quite so bold and ugly. There we go. So there's our top section for our search bar. Next thing we're going to do is drop in our featured recipe section. So we'll just duplicate this heading and drag and drop that underneath once we've created our new section. So let's just drop that in there. Change the color on that. So we've got the style set that to be purple. So that keeps our styling and everything in place. And again, we're going to do the same as before. We're going to come into our advanced section, just put in some padding above we we'll quickly just change our title to something that makes a bit more sense for this which is going to be our featured recipes and there we go so the next thing we need to do is just drop in our custom loop so we're going to do same again we're going to come over into our widgets on the left hand side we're going to come down to posts and drop that underneath our featured recipe section and as you can see that does the same as we did before so we just need to change this over now to custom choose our default loop and what we're going to do then is we're going to make sure we've got the right information in here change that columns to two because we want this to be slightly larger and have a bit more impact and we're going to change the post per page again to two we just want the first two featured recipes we're not going to worry about the facet wp because we're not going to be filtering this live filtering what we do want to do though is come to query now at the moment this is just going to show what we'd expect which is going to be the normal image at uh, the normal posts however we want to change that so we're going to change the source from posts we're going to change that to recipes Okay, so that now we'll just pull in the two latest recipes, which isn't what we want to do. What we can do, though, is include by. We're going to click in there, and we're going to choose term. Once we do that, that allows us to open up and choose what term we want to actually filter it by. So we're going to click on there, and we're just going to start typing in featured. And there we go. So it says featured, featured. So what it's doing is it's saying the custom taxonomy, the term of featured, and it's looking for the value of featured. If we wanted to set that to something like like favorites, for example, or my favorites. So what I'm going to do is just take out what's in there and we'll just start typing in a different term. 
and there we go featured my favorites so if you're wondering you're kind of a little confused what i'm talking about let me just show you what i'm talking about when it comes to the taxonomies that we created if we head back over to the dashboard, all we're going to do is we're going to come down to our recipe section and into the featured taxonomy. I'm going to click inside there, and as you can see, we've got featured, my favorites, and seasonal. We're just using these as ways of filtering our data. So that's all that's going on here is that we're saying we want the term, taxonomy, to be from featured, and we want this to be featured. So again, we'll just change that. There we go. So let's just search. There we go. So that's now going to show featured recipes pulled out directly from our custom post types. I hope that makes sense. We don't need to worry about things like pagination because we're only showing two recipes, but you can, if you want to, choose exactly when they're going to be displayed, how, what order they're going to be displayed in, and so on. I'm going to leave those as they are, say date descending. That's perfectly fine for this example. But there's the first part of our homepage. We've now created a custom filtered section that'll show just featured recipes. So now that we've set our featured recipes, the next thing we're going to do is the latest and greatest recipes. And this is going to show the latest six recipes that have been added to the website. All we need to do is simply come over and we're going to duplicate this section. So we're going to duplicate our featured section. We're also going to come up and duplicate the title. So we'll just duplicate that. We'll drag that. I want we'll drag that down below. We'll adjust the spacing and so on a little later on. We'll change the text on there from featured recipes to latest and greatest recipes. And now we're just going to change how we filter this second section out. So we're going to click on that and come back over. Everything else is going to be left the same. We're just going to change the number of columns to three and we're going to change the number of results or posts per page to be six. There we go. We're not going to put any pagination in this. We're going to leave that to none. What we are going to do though is come into our query section and from our query section, we're going to change the parameters inside there. So we don't want to include anything in particular. So we're going to take out all of that. We are going to jump over to the exclude section. And in there, we're going to do the reverse. We're going to say term. And again, we're going to put in featured, featured. So what we're doing is we're stopping anything that's going to be displayed at the top in the featured recipes from displaying in the latest and greatest recipes below, because obviously you don't want to end up with duplicates of the same recipes in there. So you can see it's incredibly quick and easy to start doing these kinds of things where we can create multiple different loops, all filtered or queried in different ways. And then we can build up a really nice complex looking homepage, all dynamic data, but all done very, very easily. Now, there are a couple more things I want to do with the homepage before we finished with it. First of all, let's make a little bit more space for these sections. So we're going to come into our title there. We're just going to select it, come to our advanced, and we're just going to drop in 50 pixels at the top just to give us a little bit of breathing space there. Next up, we're going to come over and we're going to just drop in a button. And we're going to use this button to go through and view all of the featured uh, recipes as opposed to just the two that are on there. So let's drag over, put a button in on that section. Now we're just going to change this over and put some content in there that makes sense. We're just going to say view or featured recipes. Okay. We're going to then set that to be right aligned. What we're going to do with the link is we're going to come in and we're going to specify we want to use a particular type of link. So we're going to click on dynamic and from there, we're going to scroll down and we're going to find internal URL. Now this is pretty cool. I like this. This is a new feature that I think is, or this is a feature that I think is really good. And it's not one that I've used too much. We specified an internal URL. We can click on the little wrench icon and we can choose what type of internal link is this going to be? Well, we know this is a taxonomy because the featured is a taxonomy. So we're going to click on taxonomy. It says search and select and it currently says all. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same again. We're going to search for featured. And there's a weird little glitch for some reason. Whenever I do that, it pops up to the top left hand corner. But you can see featured, featured, click on there. That now tells it it's going to link through to the featured taxonomy and display everything inside there but i just want to tidy that link up a little bit so first thing we're going to do we're going to add an icon into this we want an arrow so we're going to find this arrow pointing to the right hand side we're going to insert that into there specify that we want that to be after and what we're going to do is we're going to come into the styling section and from there we're going to set the text color to be the burgundy color that we've been using and the background color we're going to set to be transparent we can then tweak typography if we want to just to make that a little bolder so we'll say something like maybe 500 actually let's try 600 and we'll just increase the size of that a little bit so it's just a little bit more evident 16 looks pretty good i like that that's okay i like that so what we're going to do then is we're going to just come over to the hover state we're going to change the text color on there to a dark gray 
and we're going to apply a hover animation which will grow so what will happen is when you take your mouse over you'll see it's a link going somewhere and it does something so pretty good next up we're going to do exactly the same thing now we're going to say we want to view all the recipes so we're going to duplicate that drag that down underneath this section and drop that into there and we can now just check that from there adjust this just to say view more recipes there we go view more recipes and we just need to change that link and we're simply going to take this off and we're just going to drop in the link to our recipe archive so all that is is there's our recipe archive ignore anything that pops up and there we go so now that'll view more recipes we can update this page if we want to and we've got one more section that's going to go in this new section is going to have two dedicated little blocks in there. And what it's going to do is it's going to allow us to go through and view our favorites, which again is a custom internal URL, and also our seasonal favorites. So you'll see what I mean about it. It's just a great way of using that internal URL option. So first things first, let's come to the top. Let's just duplicate this heading so we don't have to go through the process of doing that manually, and we'll drop that in there. We'll change that now to more great recipes. Just change the text. There we go. And now we're going to come over and we're going to insert an inner section below that. And we're going to just set things up on there. So there's our first section. So what we're going to do is now we're going to come in and we're going to drop in another card in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a call to action. And this is just going to be a great way of being able to visually separate these sections from the recipe. So we're going to choose a call to action. But obviously you could set this up and build this any way you want. How you build it is not important at all. Okay, so... We can change the way this looks if we want to. We're going to set it up to look a little like this. If you want to, you can change the style on there. We can choose an image, and I'm not too bothered what images I choose. This is just, just to demonstrate how it all works more than anything. Okay, so we're going to change these this text now. So the content, we're going to set this up to our favorite recipes. And we can drop in some other information underneath it if we want to. We're going to keep this, like I say, really, really simple and clean. But this is just going to link through to those relevant different sections on our site. Change, click here. I'm going to drop in our favorites. Actually, just put our faves. And we'll style that if you want to. But before we do, let's just go into the dynamic links. Again, we're going to do internal URL. Once we've done that, click on the little wrench icon. Type is going to be taxonomy. And this time, we're going to just choose a different one. And we're going to put fave. Let's let us search my favorites. And there we go. So that's now linked that through to that section on the site. And what we could do now is if we want to, we can easily come in and style the various different aspects. So if we come into the button, for example, we'll change the text color on there and we'll set that to white. We'll change the background to our burgundy color. And then we come to the hover state text white. And we'll do the background color a lighter gray. So now we get this hover effect. And uh, we can also take off any border on there so we can say any border widths, whatever you kind of want to do. So you can set that up any, any way you want. Let's duplicate that. We'll drop that then into the right hand side. We'll do the same thing again. We change the image on there to something different. We're going to change the text to our seasonal favorites. So let's just change that text over in there. Change the content. There we go. Seasonal favorites. And finally, we'll just change. The message in there and we need to just change the url now so again with taxonomy is perfectly fine we'll get rid of what's in there and this time we're going to type in seasonal and we get that weird little quirk where it pops at the top but now what we've done is we've created a section that allows us to go through and view a custom taxonomy this example we've got our favorites and the next one is where we've got the option to go through and see the seasonal favorites so let's just change that button there again and we'll just put seasonal so it makes more sense it doesn't confuse our viewers Okay, so let's update that page. So we've now created a much more feature-rich home page. What we're going to do is just set this now. So we're going to jump out of our dashboard and go back into our settings section. And what we want is we want to go into reading and set this as our home page. So set a static page. Home page is going to be home page. Save our changes. And then we can jump back over to our site and refresh our home page. And there is our nice new home page all set up with links through to various different sections. So if we click on there, That'll take us through into our favorites, or into my favorites, I should say. If we come back out and go to seasonal, and it's in seasonal, you can see that's the seasonal one. And everything's looking good. One problem we have, though, if we go and view the recipes from here, you can see that takes us into the right template. However, if we go and take a look at these sections at the bottom, it takes us into the default kind of blank template. So how exactly are we going to deal with that? 
Well, we'll take a look at that right now. There's two ways you could treat this. You could either create a new archive page specifically for your feature. So if you wanted to have a different layout, slightly different options, whatever you wanted to do there, you could do that. Or you can just edit the default recipe archive. Now, because we've got filters set up on our recipe archive, I don't want to use that. I want to have a slightly different layout for those results when you're looking at featured. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in and take a look at the edit with Elementor for the default recipe archive. And we're going to cheat a little bit just for the fact this makes life a little quicker, quicker and easier. We cut this section, we're going to right click, and we're going to copy it. We're going to come back out, exit to our dashboard. And we're going to come back into our theme builder and we're going to say we want to add a new. We're going to choose an archive. And from there, we're going to call this featured archive. Create our template. And now we can just cheat by just getting rid of this, right click in, choose paste, and that'll pull in exactly what we had before. Now all we need to do is right click to get rid of this extra column that we don't want. So we delete that from there. And then we can just set this up to be three columns wide. We don't need facet WP on it because we're not searching. Just make sure that actually pulls in the right preview. It's just decided to play silly so-and-sos. So recipes archive, apply and preview. There we go. So what we can do, like I say, is come back into this, change any parameters we want. So pagination, we can set that up and we want. If we want to change that, we can do that. But we basically now have a new archive page specifically for our featured. So whether that's the featured, whether it's my favorites, or it's the seasonal, or anything else we may sort of build in the future, we've now created that. So all we need to do is apply a condition. So we can click on publish, add a condition. We don't want all archives because that'll just cause confusion with the other archive that we've got. We're going to do is expand that out come down to Recipes Archive and choose Featured, which is our custom taxonomy. Save and close, and we are done. We've now created a custom results page for any of those custom taxonomies that use the Favorites section. So if we come back over, refresh this, we now have our new section, our new template built out. Again, I hope that makes sense. So you come over to our homepage. Now if we come down and we want to view all featured recipes, we can click on there. That'll take us through and show us that template. And the same thing goes if we come down to either of these, or if we want to view more recipes, we can click on that and that'll take us through to what we'll have our filters down the right hand side, because this is where all of our recipes are, regardless of what categories or anything they're in. So we've now created archive pages to display both the normal archive and also any kind of sub filtered archives for favorites. It's now time to revisit the actual recipe page itself. And the first thing we're going to do is set up the template for the repeater region for the nutritional information. Now, again, we have to do this slightly differently because out of the box, Elemental Pro doesn't allow us to work with repeater regions. So we're going to use anywhere Elemental Pro's template structure to work with that. So in the dashboard, we're going to come over to AE templates and we're going to come down and say add new. And once we're in there, we're going to create our new template, which we're going to call Nutritional Repeater Template AE. Like I said, I always put the AE in there because it means that I can see exactly what template is going to be used at any particular point. Let's scroll down. and Again, we've got the any, Anywhere Elemental settings, and we need to change these now to work with the repeater block. So from the render mode, we're going to change that from normal. And unfortunately, you can't see this because it's right at the bottom of the screen. But we have an entry called ACF Repeater Block. I'm going to choose that. It then says preview post. In other words, what post do you want to use just to preview the data when you're building this template out? We're going to come in and choose one from there. So I know that I'm going to use this biscotti one. So we're going to use that one. And you can see the repeater field ACF automatically pulls in nutritional information. Now, obviously, if you had more than one repeater field, you'd have to set this to be the correct repeater field. For this example, we're only actually using one. So that's perfectly fine. Now we've done that, we're going to click on Publish, or we just click on Save Draft. Both would do the same thing. And now we're ready to go in and start building out the Elementor template. So let's just come into Edit with Elementor. That'll open up the editor, and we can now start building out all the various different parts for our particular template. First thing we're going to do is get rid of this title. So we're going to come over to the bottom left-hand corner, take off the title, and we're going to set the page layout to be Elementor Canvas, so we get rid of the headers and the footers and any other kind of distractions we may have. Okay, so now we have our blank template ready to start building things out. So the first thing we're going to do is drop in the actual layout we're going to use. Now it's going to be really simple. It's going to be two columns. A left is going to have the information about the actual nutritional value, and the one on the right-hand side is going to be the one that contains the percentage for the daily allowance. What we need to do is come over. We're going to create a simple two-column, one-row section, and this is going to be the basic 
template for our actual content. Now, obviously, you can style this any way you want. One of the things I'm going to do is just select that. I'm going to come into Vertical Align, set that to Middle, and we just make sure that these columns are set to Vertical Align for the middle for both of those, so everything sits nice and neat and tidy. There we go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come in and put in the actual data. And again, we need to use the Anywhere Elemental widgets for this. So we're going to come back out, just close all these up a second until we get to what we want, which are the AE template elements. And we want the custom field option again. So we're going to find the custom field, drag and drop that into the first section. And now that actually allows us to go in and specify what key we want to use and the type where there's a link and default and so on, and any icon we want to use with it. So how do we find the values for that? Well, it's very easy. If we come back over and take a look at our repeater field, you can see we've got three nested repeated fields in there or meta fields, nutrition type, value, and percentage to daily allowance. All we need to do is copy each one of these. We'll take this one first, come back over, drop that into the name of the key. That will then pull in the title for that. As you can see, it pulls in total fat. We could do the same again, and we'll do that in a moment, but let's just go through and make sure we've got everything set up inside here. So we can style this if we want to. So we can come down and we're gonna set this to be a span. And then what we can do is we can just apply some simple styling to this if we want. So we're gonna come here, we're gonna set this to a dark gray. Once we've done that, we'll leave everything else as is. That's perfectly fine, but you can style this any way you want and do as much styling and sort of all those kinds of things to make sure it looks the way you want and fits in with your template. So there's the first one. What we're gonna do now is we're simply gonna duplicate this. So we'll duplicate that, come back over to our repeater region, copy the next value, change that inside there, and you'll see that will now change to 12.8. And we'll do it one more time. So we'll just duplicate this, come back over, and we'll take our percentage daily allowance. So copy that from there, and we'll just change the value inside there as well. Next thing we need to do is just make sure everything lines up the way we want. The percentage value needs to go over into the right-hand column, so that's fine. However, we need to have the grammage for fat and the total fat label, in this example, we need to have them in line with each other. So again, that's one of the things that's really nice. We can do that really, really simply inside Elementor Pro. So what we need to do is select the first one. So we're gonna come in, select that, come over to Advanced, and we're gonna come down to Custom Positioning. And inside there, we're gonna just change this. So we've got width, and you can see we can set full width, inline, and so on. So we want this to be inline. And we'll do the same then for the next one. So we're gonna click on that, come over to Advanced, come down to Custom Positioning, and we'll set that to be inline. And now everything lines up nice and neat and tidy, but we just need to make a little bit of space in there. So all we can do is just come into the Advanced section, into Advanced, come into the padding, and what we're gonna do is just a little bit of left padding. So we'll set that to be five pixels, just to give us a bit of space. And we'll change the styling slightly on this as well. So we make this a lighter gray, just lighten that up a little bit, like so. And we'll just make the font size just a little bit smaller, something like that. And we'll specify we want this to be italic. Let's go over one more pixel higher, there we go. Okay, so we've now created the basic layout for our repeater. If we update this, We've now created our repeater region, and we can now reference this inside our templates. So to start using this, we're gonna come back out of our template, come back into all our AE templates, and we're gonna come into our single post template, which is for the actual recipe itself. And we're gonna drop this into the top right-hand corner. To do that, we're gonna close these down, and we're gonna come in and use another of the AE template widgets, and we're gonna come down, we're gonna find the repeater. So there we go, AEACF repeater. Drag and drop that over into the right-hand column, and you see it says, please select your template. So all we need to do is come into there, choose the template for the repeater region we want. In this example, we only have one. Next thing we need to do is just choose the repeater field. Now, sometimes there's a little bit of a quirk with AE Pro, and this doesn't always populate. So if you find that is the case, save or update the template you're working on and reload the page, and you should then find the repeater field ACF will then populate correctly. So we've got nutritional information, so we'll select that, and we should then find that, that now brings in the data that we've created as part of our repeater. Now, currently, it looks like a little bit of a mess, but we can change that. Come to the layout section, and we can choose between grid or carousel, so you can choose whatever you want inside there. You can also set up this to be masonry, so if you have different height sections, they'll all marry up and look nice and neat and tidy. However, what we want to do is just change this from columns being three, we're gonna change that down to one. You can see that now ties everything up and brings everything in line the way we expect it to be. 
We can then adjust things like the column gaps. So we're going to take that out of there and the row gap, we're going to reduce that down. Now things are starting to look nice and neat and tidy. So what we can do if we want to is come in and start styling things inside here as well. So we can put things like little underlines and so on. We can do whatever we want. So let's just do that. Let's just say we're going to put a dotted line underneath there and we're going to change this over to be just at the bottom. So we're going to put one pixel dotted line and we're going to change that to be a light gray. And there we go. So we now have our nutritional information displayed on the right hand side. Obviously, you can go through and you can create sort of headers for this and make it a little bit more informational and you know, a bit more detailed. But for now, I just want to show you how we do this. And we're just going to simply drop in a heading at the top. So it just looks nice and tidy and people know exactly what this is. So we're going to just set this to be nutritional information. And we'll just style that then a little better. So at the moment, we're going to set that to H4 because this isn't as important as a lot of the other information on the page. And we'll just come in and we'll just set the typography. We'll set that to be a weight of 400. And the size we'll set to be something like about, about 20. That looks pretty good. There we go. So we've now created our nutritional information on the right hand side. That's a repeater region that can be different for every single recipe that we create. That's how easy it is to start to implement these into your designs. Now, obviously, if I was working on this, I'd add a little extra styling in some additional things like headers and so on for each of the different columns. But you can see how easy it is to start implementing. So the next thing we need to do is to go through and add in all the extra information to do with the recipe itself over just this basic description that we have at the top. So let's take a look at how we do that next. Now, this is one of those areas where you can get as creative as you want when you're creating the actual layout for your single recipe type. We're going to start off just by adding the relevant elements in, and then I'll quickly style things afterwards so you can see the end result that I'm working towards. Again, because we're still inside the Anywhere Elementor template, we need to use those AE template widgets. We can't generally use the normal Elementor Pro ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag in the various different things we want. So we're going to, first of all, create a new inner section. So we're going to create an inner section inside there, set this to be just one column. So we'll delete the second column, and we're just going to come in and make sure that everything is laid out the way we want. So we're going to say we want no column gaps just to give us the full width so we get control of exactly what we put in there and how we style it. Next up, we're going to come out and we're going to go into the Anyway Elemental Pro widgets, and we want the post image first of all. So we're going to drag and drop that inside there. Thumbnail is perfectly fine, and we're going to set that to be centered. We're not going to link this to anything because obviously we're already inside the post itself. Now we'll worry about styling this a little later on. Let's just put all the elements in there first. Next up, we're going to come in and we want to put in the actual title. So we're going to come down and we're going to say grab the AE template title. You can see that pulls that data in. We're going to drop in a little separator. So we're going to come into the basic section, drop a divider inside there. We'll leave that as is and we'll just, yeah, solid. That's, that's all fine. We'll leave that as is. Come back out, and the next thing we're going to do is drop in some additional information. So we want some headings inside here. So we're going to come in, choose the heading, drag and drop that inside. We're going to change the dynamic data on this. So we're going to change that. And what we want is we're going to scroll down to our ACF fields, click on there. Now we're going to click on the little wrench icon. We can choose what field we want to put inside there. So the first thing we're going to do is preparation time. So we're going to click on preparation time. Now, one of the issues you have when you're working with AE Pro and you're dealing with just the normal Elementor template widgets is it doesn't display it correctly, as in it doesn't display it at all in this example. So you can see we're working kind of blind with this. However, the data is being pulled in and it will be displayed later on. Let's just click on advanced and crack on with this. We're going to put prep time inside there. And then we're going to duplicate that. I'm going to set this now to a different field. So we're going to come back in to the preparation time. We're going to put cooking time in there. I'm going to change prep time to cooking time. Now, the nice thing with these advanced areas inside the heading widget and anything else to do with ACF is you can also put HTML in there. You can sort of reference classes and so on, and then you can style things directly inside here. I'm not going to worry about too much on this example, but just know that you can do that. Okay, so there's the two things we want to put to start off with. Next up, we need to move on to the next section. Before we do, let's style this first block so we've got something to work with. I'm going to choose this block first of all. And from there, we're going to just go in and we're going to style things out a little bit. So let's go to the style section, come to the background, and we're going to set a background color of the burgundy color we're working with. 
just so everything looks nice and neat and consistent. Select our title and we're going to change that now to be white. So that stands off there. We're going to change the typography a little bit on there because we're going to just make it a little thinner. So something like that. Size wise, let's adjust that as well. So it's not quite so prevalent. 24. Actually, let's make it something like 28. 30. Yeah, that'll do. Come back out into our content section. We'll set that to be centered. And there we go. So that now looks a little neater. Next up, let's come over to our image and let's just make that sort of overlap thing so it looks a little bit more classy, a little bit more styled out. So the first thing we're going to do is come into our advanced section and we're going to come to our margins and link those. We're going to set a top margin of minus 95 for this example. There we go. Do you see that now? Pushes it up above the sort of main block. We'll deal with the spacing in a moment. Don't worry about that. Next up, we're going to come over and we're going to make sure that everything is nice and neat and tidy and round, just so it looks a little bit cooler. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over into our style section with making sure that our image is still selected. Border radius, we're going to come into that. We're going to set a border type of solid. Border radius of 5 pixels, and we're going to set that to be white, so we have a little separation from the burgundy. And then the border radius, we're going to set to 100 pixels, and that will nice, make that nice and round, look quite cool. Just come back up then to the section above where the text is, and what we're going to do is we're going to come to advanced on there, come to our padding, and we're going to set, let's try about 120. There we go. So we've now got a nice gap, and everything looks nice and neat and tidy. So I like the look of that. Let's deal with the styling for this particular little separator. We're going to just make that about 60%, center that off there. We're going to set this then in the style to be white. And we'll just drop the opacity down a little bit on that and maybe increase the weight to maybe two. Let's go for that. There we go. And we'll reduce the gap on there because we don't need such a big gap. Okay. Next, we're just going to come into our preparation time and so on. Come into our styling, set that to be white. Like I say, we're not going to see it at the moment, but we can just adjust that now just so everything is nice and tidy inside there. So we know that when we actually pull this up on screen, it's going to be laid out tidy. Change that from HTML. Actually, let's just change that to a P tag. And we'll do the same for the one above. So center that. Styling, make sure that's white. And what we can do is we can just right click, copy that, save the one above, paste our style in there. So that should pick up the style now for everything. Okay, so there's the first part of that done. The next thing we need to do now is go and create the next section, which will have the description, the ingredients, the instructions, all our custom fields. So we're going to come back over to our left hand column and we're going to drag in another inner section to sit below our heading. Again, we're going to get rid of that extra column, so we're going to delete that. So choose this and we're going to set the column gaps to be wide because we want a nice bit of spacing around this section. Next up, let's pull in a heading and drop that in there. I'm going to change this now to description and we're just going to adjust the styling on that as well. So set our heading to something like H4. Like I say, we're just dealing with this just to make sure that everything is kind of consistent with the importance of the information that's being displayed. Style, we're going to come in there. We're going to set this to be dark grey. Typography, we're going to set this to be... 600 and we're going to set it to be uppercase and then we're going to drop the size down so it's not quite so in your face and we'll also open up the letter spacing by about one so there's our first one now what we can do is we can duplicate that a couple of times so we're going to duplicate and duplicate one more time and change the titles on there so the next one's going to be ingredients and the final one is going to be instructions and there we go. There's our three key headings. I'm going to drag in a separator line just so we've got a little separation. So I'm going to drag that over there. We'll set the styling on that. So 100 is fine. Solid is fine. We're going to come in and say style. I'm going to set this to be grey. Adjust that slightly. And we're going to set the width to about three pixels. Gap. We're going to get rid of that gap on there. And again, we're just going to duplicate this a couple of times and position accordingly. There we go. Get in there, you little so-and-so. Okay, so now we're going to pull in the data for our actual three different sections. So all we're going to do is just come in and we're going to say we want the text editor for this. So we're going to come in, text editor, I'm going to drag and drop that into the relevant section. I'm going to just choose dynamic. 
From there, we're going to scroll down to ACF field, click on the wrench icon, open that up, and this one's going to be the description. And we should find that that will then pull in the data for us. If it doesn't, don't worry, we just need to probably save this out and pull it back in later. Like I say, there's still that little quirk because we're dealing with the Anywhere Elementor Pro features alongside the Elementor feature. So there's kind of just a little bit of a, a visual discrepancy between the two there. Let's just duplicate this again. So I'm going to duplicate that, drop that into the ingredients section and just change the source for that. So again, I'm going to come in, change from description to ingredients and do the same again. Duplicate that, drag and drop that down underneath there, select it, choose that ingredients. This time it's instructions. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and tidy up these lines and everything to make sure everything is nice and neat and tidy. And once we've done that, we can now save this out and we can start taking a look at how this all works and take a look at our handiwork. So let's just update this. And that's our template basically completed. So I quickly went ahead, updated the style and added in the calories into the actual details for the recipe itself using exactly the same techniques we just covered. And let's take a look at that now, how it's all working inside our new template. If we come over to the homepage, you can see we've got all our recipes and so on. So let's click on this cranberry dark chocolate biscotti. If you take a look now on the right hand side, we've got all the additional information from our repeater field is inserted. If we scroll down, you can see we've got a nice, neat, tidy layout for all the details to do with the description, the ingredients and so on. And as you can see, we've got the preparation time, cooking time and the calories per serving listed. So that's the basics of the template put together. Like I say, if you want to, you can add additional things in to the right hand side on this section. And we'll take a look at adding a couple of extra useful things in a little later. Now let's move on to dealing with the searching and the filtering, which is where we can really get in and fine tune exactly what information is going to be displayed as part of your website. So the next on the list is the search function for our website. Now out of the box, WordPress will only search against things like posts, pages, and so on. It doesn't actually search any data that's part of our custom fields and our ACF custom fields. So we need to rectify that. We're going to be using a plugin called Search WP. The reason I quite like this one, and it is a paid for plugin, unfortunately, is that it's fast, it's quick, it's easy, but also it's very, very powerful. There are other alternatives out there that you could use if you want to, but for me, I find this one just incredibly simple to work with. So all you need to do is insert a normal search field into your website. Nothing more than that. We're going to come into the dashboard now. I'm going to come into the settings section, and from there, we're going to choose Search WP. Click and open that up, and that's going to take us into the settings for Search WP. Now you can see, to enable this, please review and share your initial settings. So we can go and take a look at our settings if we want to. However, we'll leave that as it is for now. That's fine. Now you can see underneath, this is what's going to be searched against currently. So you can see it says posts and pages, which obviously, like I say, limits what we want to do. Now, because our blog, our website, where you want to call it, is focused specifically on these recipes, for me, I'm going to get rid of these search fields completely. So we're going to exclude that one and the same for pages. We're going to exclude that as well. So this won't search on anything right now. So if we come in and click on add post type, you can see it now gives us a range of different things we can pick. We want the recipes. We can leave everything else unchecked. So we can choose recipes. We expand that out and we can now go through and choose how important the various different aspects of our custom post type actually are. So you can see what you can do is you can specify whether you want to use various different attributes that are part of the actual post itself, and you can also apply a weight to them. So we can say the title is very important. The content, we could say, actually is a little less important. So we could say, let's bump that up to maybe 20. So that's saying that's about 20% importance. The slug, which is basically just the URL that you've got to use, we can drop that down, say we're not overly worried about searching against that. And we could, if we wanted to, just leave it at this point and we could just say we save this out and then it'll go index everything. However, where the real power of this comes in is we can add additional attributes in. So if we click on add attribute, we can choose from a taxonomy or we can choose from a custom field. So we come to the custom fields, it'll open up another drop down box, which then allows us to go through and choose what custom field we want to use. So we can click on there and we can say we may want to deal with something like the actual description or the ingredients. We might be looking for a specific ingredient. So we can add ingredients in there and we can say how important is this? So we'll bump that up to maybe 40% or 40. So we add some weight to that and we can keep on adding custom fields or we can keep on adding taxonomies and things into this search facility as much as we want so we get all the different things that we need inside there. 
So we're going to leave everything as is because this is something that's very specific to the kind of content that you're working with. But you can see that using this gives you a whole range of options on how you search, what you search against. Really, really powerful and very, very simple to work with. Let's just save that engine. And that then is going to save all the settings we've done. And it's going to go through the indexing process. And you'll see now that's currently indexing. So we're saying how many are indexed, how many are unindexed, and the main row count. How many rows is it going to sort of pull in for search statistics and things? So once we've done that, we can go through, if you want to take a look at the advanced settings, if there's anything you want in there. But what this allows you to do is choose stop words that'll be ignored. So you can see things like a, about, above, and so on. We can also use synonyms. So if you want to put synonyms in there, we can drop those in. So you can fine tune and configure your search to be exactly what you want, how you want it to work, what you want to search against, and how specific you want it to be on various different things. So I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail with this, but what you can see is that you can very easily create really comprehensive searches with a ton of really useful features inside there. Once we've done that, we can simply come out of this and go back in to actually take a look at the website itself. So we're going to come back in, we're going to refresh this, and now we can test our search out. So we're not going to search for something that's a name or anything like that. We're going to search for an ingredient because we've applied the ingredients as part of our search criteria. So we're going to type in honey, because I know that one or two of the recipes in here have honey as part of their ingredients. So once we've done that, we're going to click, and you can see now that'll come through search results for honey, and we've got two results inside there. And if we click in any side of these, we could take a look and actually see where that honey is inside the actual ingredients itself. So you can see we can come through and we can search for these various different things, specifying exactly where they are inside our design. Now, you'll notice there's one problem, though. We've got a very generic looking search results page. We want to set this up so it looks in keeping with what we've created before. So the next stage is we're going to go and create the search results archive page. We're back in the dashboard. And what we need to do is come over to our template section and into our theme builder. And from there, we're going to create a new archive page. So we're going to click on the archives, add new, and we'll name this default search archive just so we know exactly what it's working with. Create our template, and once we've done that, we only need to put a couple of things into this. We're gonna close out of this, and we're gonna create our own template. First thing, let's come in and add in a new section, and just put in some padding at the top and bottom. So again, like I say, we're keeping that consistency of design throughout all our different pages. We're gonna come over, and we're gonna drop in a title inside there. So we're just going to put in a normal title and we're going to change the text that's in there and we're going to put in your yummy search results. We'll quickly set the styling on that and we'll just commit the typography and we'll set that to be 400. That'll be fine. Now what we need to do is come in and actually set up the archive results. So all we need to do is click on archive posts. That'll drop that in there. We just need to change this over like we've done with all the other archives to custom. Change that to our default loop. Columns is perfectly fine. Facet WP, we don't need because we're not going to actually filter these. Pagination, we're going to put in there to be numbers and previous and so on, like we've done before. Everything is looking good inside there. What we can do if we want to, we can change these for the preview settings. We don't really need to worry too much about that. So we're going to publish this. We're going to add a condition in, and we're going to change this from all archives, and we're going to set this to be search results. Once we've done that, we can say save and close. And that now creates a custom archive page for our search results. So we come back over to our previous layered results. We're just going to refresh this page. And we'll find that that will now use our new template that we've just created, all keeping that same design. And as you can see, it's incredibly simple to do with both Elementor Pro and also where we've set up these custom templates for the loop. OK, we've ticked off a huge amount of this website. Now we're going to go into the filtering section. So this is going to be using that Facet WP plugin. Again, like I say, there are other plugins out there that do this kind of thing, but I found Facet WP to be quick, easy, and intuitive to work with, and it's not crazy expensive. Links in the description below, so if you want to take a look at it in more detail, and also the different add-ons that you can get for this to expand the functionality, you can follow that link and take a little look. Okay, so what we need to do now is start setting up what are called facets. Now, if you consider a facet to be one type of filter, that's all it really means. So we can create multiple facets, and each one of those is an individual filter type. So let's take a look at how we do it. What we're going to do is we're going to come over into the settings section, and we're going to come down to facet WP. 
Once you're inside there, when you install this the first time, you're going to see that you're going to have one option in there, one facet, which is called categories. We don't want that. This is just one that's set up by default. So we're going to click to get rid of that. And that's now cleared that out. Now, the other nice thing when you're working with Facet WP, you don't really need to configure anything. We've got settings in here, but that just allows you to put in your serial number, put it into debug mode and so on. We don't really need to touch that. So we're not going to worry about that in this video. We're just going to go ahead and start creating our facets. Let's click and add a new one. And this is the kind of dialog box that you get now that allows us to go through and configure what we want to search against, what we want to name it, the short codes that are going to be used and all those kinds of things. So the first thing we're going to do is change the label of this. And the first thing we're going to search against or filter against is the recipe types. So we're going to choose recipe types. You can see that pulls in the name now for us. Next up is what kind of facet do you want to use? Click and expand and you can see we have out of the box a range of different options in there. Check boxes, drop downs, hierarchy and so on and so forth. We're going to keep this first one very simple. We will take a look at some other options in the next step. Choose check boxes and then we're going to say what's the data source. In other words, what inside your actual website are we going to filter against? So you can see by default it says post type. We click and that gives us a lot more options. You can see they're grouped up into things like custom post types if you're using ACF or you've got things like posts if you're just using the normal WordPress. You've also got taxonomies and things and this will pull in any custom taxonomies that you create. So this is what we want to target. We're going to come down and we're going to say that we want to use recipe types. Click on there. That will now change the options underneath to base upon what the data source is and what the facet type is. So you'll have different settings depending upon the different type of facet and the different data sources that you use. Parent term, we don't need to worry about that. We're not going to worry about hierarchical for this example. You can if you want to. Everything in here has a little sort of help icon that will tell you what each one of these actually does. We are going to say show ghosts and we're going to leave preserve ghost order. Behavior, you can see we can say narrow the results or widen the results. And then you've got sort by the highest count, the display value, the raw value, the term order and so on. So we can say let's put that into term order. We then have the counts. This is the maximum number of facet choices to be shown. And then we've got the soft limit, which is the, shog, the toggle link after this many choices. So you can expand this out. So if you have lots and lots of different categories or recipe types, that could get a little unwieldy. So you can set this up so you can expand it out after 10 uh, sort of like sections that have been used. Hope that makes sense. So what we need to do now is say save changes. We're going to re-index. So that'll go through now and check through all the data based upon our data sources and it'll build all that information out for us. So we're going to copy this short code and if we come back to our facets, you can see now it tells us there's our new facet, tells us the type, tells us the source and also now that we've re-indexed, tells us the number of rows that are being displayed. So we've got 17 different sort of recipe types associated or 17 different sort of variation, should we say, because you could have a recipe could be in multiple different recipe types. Therefore, that's what this is displaying. Again, I hope that makes sense. So now we've got our first facet. How do we go about actually inserting this into our design? What we need to do is come over to our template for our archive where we want to put these filters. Come to template, down to our theme builder. And once we're inside there, we're going to come down and we want to find the default recipe archive. So we're going to click to open that up. Once that's opened up with Elementor, we can start populating that right hand column. So the first thing we're going to do is create a title for this. So we're going to drag the heading over, drop that onto the right hand side. Once we're inside there, we can change this now and we'll say filter, change that. There we go. So we can filter our recipe type and we're just going to quickly change this out H4 and we'll just change the styling a little bit. So it just looks nice and tidy and in keeping with what we're doing. So we'll just adjust the size a little bit. OK, so how do we put this? filter in there, this, this facet in there. What we need to do is use the short code widget. So just search for short code, drag and drop that over onto our page. Once we've done that, we can now drop in the short code. So we're going to just paste that in there and you can see it now says facet and we've got facet WP and the recipe types. Now it won't actually display anything inside here. It won't display the actual results. They'll only do that in real time when you're on the actual site itself. It won't do it inside the template. We can apply this or we need to make sure and this is important, otherwise you'll find this won't work correctly. 
we're going to select the actual loop that we want to work with the archives and we come and come down and make sure that the facet wp option is enabled now any page that doesn't use facet wp can have this disabled but any page you want to use it on you have to make sure that that option is enabled you've installed the facet wp elementor plugin because that's how it works in conjunction with elementor other than that that's it so now if we update this page if we come back over now into our test site what we're going to do is we're going to come into our recipe section which now should display our filters. So you can see we've now got our filters displayed in there. It shows us five and we can click to expand to see the additional ones. So it's gonna roll these up to make sure that we don't overwhelm the end user with you know 100 different options. Then what we can do is you can see we have a count for these. And if we click like dessert, for example, select that, that will now filter that out to only show the desserts. We can uncheck that and we can try party food. We now get three results. So that's how we create our first facet. Now we're going to jump back over and take a look at another kind of facet where if someone wants to search by calories, which if you're thinking about it when you're dealing with a recipe website, especially if you have healthy options in here, this is going to be something that's very useful because it's an easy visual way of just filtering out to find those nice low calorie recipes. So let's take a look at how we can do that next. So go ahead, hop back over into facet WP and we're now going to create another entry, another facet. So this time we're going to call this one calories. We're going to change this from a checkbox. We're going to use a slider on this because it's a nice visual way of being able to sort of set those values and slide things between so you can see exactly what you're doing. Then we say the data source. So what we need to do now is we need to find those calories. So what I can do is I can start typing and you see that will pull up. We've got both custom fields and advanced custom fields. Both are going to pull in the same data. So we're going to say recipe, calories per serving, other data sources we don't need to worry about. And we're going to leave every other value in here as it is except for the suffix. And we're going to put cals. So what you can do now is you can see we've got the format. We can change that if we need to. So depending upon the kind of thing that you're dealing with, you may be dealing with something like car sales, whereas you might want to put things like 5K, 5.3K and so on. I'm going to leave this as values like this because we're dealing with simple calories. The step, if you were dealing with much bigger values, you could set a much larger step on here if you wanted to. Again, I'm going to leave it with one because the values we're going to deal with are not going to be exorbitant, but you can change that should you want to. What we're going to do now is save our changes re-index this let it go through and re-index now for the new data that we've sort of selected you see that'll go through and tell us how much it's indexing and there we go it's complete i'm going to copy that short code like we did last time come back to our facets and you can see we now have nine different rows because we have nine recipes currently inside here this is going to filter against those nine so all we need to do now is come back into our templates again into our theme builder open up our archive which is our default recipe archive in elemental once we've done that, we're going to create another section. So we're going to duplicate this title and we're going to duplicate that. And we're just going to put that down and we'll say calories per serving. So that's the filter. Come back over. We're going to create another short code section. Drop that below there and paste our code in. Click apply and we're going to update our template. And we can now find we've got a new section to come back over and if we refresh this we should now find there's our calories per serving and you can see it automatically pulls in the values so our least calorific recipe is 172 calories our most calorific 523 so we can if we want to start to adjust these and see what recipes we get up inside those values so we can quickly come in and the other nice thing you notice is well, we've got the filter recipe type above that also updates to show you what sections those recipes are in. So you may say, actually, I'm looking for low calorie party food. Well, you can click on party food and you know you're filtering this based upon the recipe type and the calories in each of those recipes. So we filtered it down now to even finer results. This is OK when you've got nine examples like this, but imagine you had 900 recipes on here. This is going to be a fantastic way to filter that data down. Now, you can keep on doing this for other sections. So you may want to do number of servings and all those kinds of things. You can just create more facets, drop those into this section on the right hand side in your template. And then you can build out a really nice, complex way of creating a nice filter for your entire website. I'm going to leave it at this point because you're just going to go through the same routine as we just covered now twice, just adding in additional filter options. So just a couple of little things that I want to do now just to finalize the look of our single recipe page. So we're going to come back into all AE templates and we're going to edit our default single recipe page. 
And once you're inside there, we're gonna drop in a nice little sort of right-hand column section. This is entirely up to you if you wanna do something like this, but it just opens up the information on the right-hand side of our site and just makes things look a little nicer, a little bit more finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to add in a new section. This is going to allow us to go through and choose one of our seasonal goodies to link through to. You know, you can create this in multiple different ways, but I think this is a nice, simple way of doing things. Again, we're going to use our call to action widget. So we're just going to grab that, drop that over onto the right hand side below our nutritional information. Change our image inside here. I'm going to just use this pizza one, for example. And what we're going to do now is we're going to just change this out to make it look a bit more interesting. So skin... Yeah, classic is fine, that's perfectly fine. Content, we're gonna change that over. So we're gonna come in and we're gonna say winter warmers because it is winter time. So let's change that title on there. There we go. And we can drop in some text if we want to, to actually sort of pre-populate what this particular section is about. Let's just make sure this all sits in style with our other recipe sections. So we're going to come over, we're going to just make sure that everything looks nice and neat and tidy. So title, I think that's all great. That looks fine. What we are going to do though, is we're going to set the background color. We're going to set that to be white and we're going to come in and we're going to say we want to put a border around this, but we're going to use the box shadow option. So everything ties in nicely. So let's just adjust that to make it a lot more subtle and we'll up the blur a little bit to maybe around there. And if we want to, we can do things like, you know, add in border radius and things so we can just tidy things up. Uh, we can say we want to put 10 in there, 10 in there. That rounds the top sections off. And, you know, we can do whatever we want with this. But what we are going to do is we're going to change that button. So we want to make sure the button goes to where we want it to go to. So come into the content. Under the link section, we're going to come in and choose the dynamic option. And like we did before, we're going to say internal URL. And then from there, we're going to click on the little wrench icon, come down, and we're going to say taxonomy, and we're going to just do seasonal. There we go, featured seasonal. And if we want, we're going to change this as well, and we're going to say change this to seasonal goodies. Now, obviously, you can set this up to be dynamic if you wanted to. You can do anything you want with this. It's pretty cool, very functional, lots of dynamic options inside here. So you could create a nice little section that you could change this out at any given time using dynamic data, create a custom section inside your dashboard, and really get creative with how this is all working. What I want to do, though, is come into our button. We're going to set that to be medium. We're going to set the text color to be white. Set the background color to be our nice burgundy color, so everything now flows in with what we're doing. We don't want any borders, so hover. We're going to come over. Text color again is going to be white. Background color is going to be gray. So when we mouse over now, you can see we get the effect that we want. And we'll just set our border width and everything to be zero. Border radius to be zero. There we go. So we now have a new section that allows us to go in and choose winter warmers and jump through directly into that. Now, if you want to, what I would generally tend to go and do now is put things inside here that would be subscribed to your mailing list and so on. So it opens up the function on the right hand side of this and makes it some way that you've got consistent information throughout your entire site. But obviously, entirely up to you how you want to work with it. Let's just quickly update this, jump back over, take a look at our new template updates. And there we go. There's our winter warmers. We can click through and see our seasonal goodies. And there's our seasonal goodies inside there. So everything is now set up and configured throughout your entire site. And that's it. We've now finished this video. Hopefully what you've learned throughout this video is that you can create much more feature rich websites just by harnessing the power of advanced custom fields, Elementor Pro, and a couple of extra little plugins that open up what you can do. We've got a great looking site with lots of cool functionality, fully customizable, fully editable, do anything we want with it. We can filter it. We can search on the data we want, all done inside WordPress very easily. If you'd like to learn more about using advanced custom fields with Elementor Pro, there's over five hours worth of videos on the channel currently. I'll put a link in the description below to that playlist and you can also see it in the corner right now. Check that out. You're going to get a lot more out of WordPress by harnessing the power of advanced custom fields and creating really feature rich websites. As always, I'd love to get your feedback on this video. Drop your comments, questions, feedback in that comment section below. As always, all the applicable links for everything covered in this video are in that description, so you can check those out. And my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. Till next time, take care.